Hello again, and welcome to the final part for our logo forming project, where we're going to bring in the renders that we've just created in Cinema um, out of Cycles 4D, and we're going to comp them. It's a very simple comp. Obviously, we most of the look we developed in the real-time preview, so it's all good. So first things first, let's get right into checking how the frames look, and I can just let it play, actually. It, uh, playback is pretty quick, loading. It's not fully real-time at the moment. Just let it cash in, but we're getting this nice motion from here and we're getting the nice pushing through a field of particles and forming our logo at the end here and you can see our shimmering logos, or sorry, our shimmering particles I should say. And there we have it. Uh, and obviously we have the glimmering part as well, if we just take a quick look at that pass, it's quite a simple one, you can see it's just these particles scaling up and down as if shimmering in the light. Okay, and uh, we will actually only be using, I rendered, the, I rendered the whole part of that, but actually you only need the, it's probably around about here where it starts to form. Okay, so I've got this sat in a comp already, just, uh, or just ready to go basically. And first things first, I think we're going to add some motion blur. So I didn't render it with motion blur, but what we can do is we can actually use pixel motion blur in After Effects. Now, pixel motion blur is actually pretty efficient. If you're familiar with uh, things like Real Smart motion blur and all that kind of, uh, sort of cool plugins, this is exactly the same kind of thing. Sort of an optical flow, and you can see it adds this motion blur on. And uh, I'm pretty happy. Well, that's fairly good at default, so I might just leave it there. Definitely, it's going to cause some processing, some sort of heavier processing, but not too bad. If we just jump to a few frames where we can see it really develop. Especially here, you can see if I turn this off, you can see it goes from this nice sort of smooth motion to these quite crisp particles. Now, up to you, but uh, I think the motion blur really adds to the to the feel and kind of the motion of this spiraling. So I've actually added that in. And I've actually gone ahead and pre-rendered it with this baked in so that we don't have to let it process anymore. Even though it's actually, it's, to be honest, it's really quick. So... But what I tend to do is if I'm doing sort of a heavy operation on the base beauty uh, and then I'm going to do the color correction on top of that, I tend to want to be able to move a lot faster than it, the processing can sometimes allow. So I've actually created a proxy and all you need to do for that is uh, on your whatever your item is, you go to create proxy or you could just render it out normally. And I've just basically simply with this effect on, I've rendered out this comp and uh, then you just go in here, you set proxy, and then you go and hunt down your file. It could be a quick time, or it could be a, a sequence, mine's a sequence. And then you get this square up here, which lets me check proxy enabled. And that's just, just informing us that the proxy is enabled, which means that if I jump out of this comp, and I actually add it to our main comp, which is the one up at the top here. Oops, just drag that in. That is now not doing any processing, it's simply loading in the frames. So it's much quicker to, to display, and we can kind of get down to the, the color correction stuff a bit more. Okay, so I think adding the glimmering in first might be quite a nice thing to do. So let's um, drag the glimmering down. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pre-comp that into its own comp. So I'm going to hold Control shift c or Control, uh, Command-Shift-C. I'm just going to call it the glimmering comp. So there we go. That's fine. And it's consistent with the other pre-comp name. There we go. That could be a shot number if you, you can name it however you like. So we've got this quite simple. We don't need any motion blur or anything on this. We just want this to be glinting in the uh, at the end of this shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the layer a few times. Now, there are plugins that will let you do this. Starglow would, um, is a, probably a prime example where you could just do this out of the box very simply. But I just wanted to show you a few techniques to be able to do it without, just in case you haven't got that plugin suite. So I'm just going to drop, I'm going to duplicate this. I'll call this one the base. I'm going to call this one vertical streaks. And I'm going to actually before I duplicate that one, I'm going to add an effect. So I'm going to add a fast blur, fast box blur. And instead of universally bl blurring it all across each axis, I'm actually going to do it one at a time. So I'm going to do vertical first. And you can see there, we just get this very subtle streak of light. 
Then I'm going to change the blending mode to add. And you can see where we're going with this. And I'm going to duplicate that one, rename it. Horizontal streaks. There we go. And that's added on. And of course, we changed that one from vertical to horizontal. And you get that nice looking glint. So let's just cache a few frames. Looking pretty good. I think we could soften the uh, the main, the base one actually. So, or maybe I'll duplicate this. So I'll duplicate that again and we'll call this just Bloom. Drop uh, the effect, the box blur effect on and we'll just subtly bring that up and then add that back over as well. Just want to soften the whole too much actually. There we go. And maybe very like a one pixel blur perhaps on the base just to kind of knock off the uh, the hard edges that's too much and i might drop the iterations down to one as well just it's just a bit softer than the, the default there okay so let's jump back out i'm holding hitting tab there to just use the mini map there we go and obviously we need to blend this and i'm going to blend it with an add mode and you can see there now as this forms we're getting these glinting sort of particles now they're a bit bright at the moment so i might go in and drop them down a touch but i do quite like that it's looking cool so what i might do is i might just uh actually just drop the base opacity just down a touch oh and then we can go quite far so actually the the bloom above it is probably adding with with all three of these adding onto each other it's probably getting a bit excessive so in fact actually don't worry about this we can just do this all in the main comp we can just jump back to the main comp just drop the opacity down a bit and i think it'll still maintain the additive effect nicely yeah there we go and you can jump into those and, and you know increase the length the streak length and all that kind of cool stuff but i think that's the glimmering is pretty good there um what i want to do is i don't want it on until it's needed because up up at this end it's going to look a bit strange if there's these glimmering things well they are quite stark contrast in color so i might actually give them a tint as well so um we could either do this on yeah we could do this on this top layer here so or well, the top comp so i'm going to get the tint value out drop that onto our glimmering layer and then we need to I think we need to warm these up somewhat. So I'm going to go for like a relatively warm yellowy color. So it can be very subtle. It doesn't have to be like a really uh, saturated one, but just a, a hint will help it sort of tie in a little bit better with this this color these colors. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so. Like I said, I want to use the opacity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, well, I didn't say that yet. Um, it, it's coming on a bit early, so we're going to use opacity to fade it on. You could use a mask, but actually I think it's going to be no problem to... I'm just going to create that. I'm going to create a keyframe around about here where it's finished. Coming on. So 0%, very simple. And up they come, maybe even earlier than that, actually. There we go. And then we've got them glinting. And we're going to do something similar, actually, to the, uh, to the, to the main um, comp as well, to kind of give them a bit of a, a glinting look as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Just double checking things there we go excellent and it's not showing at the beginning which is great okay so i could even split that comp so that it, it actually starts or actually just do this there we go just so it's really clear that that starts at this point in the comp okay so next up like i said um we could do several things here we could actually do some kind of glow effect in fact I'm, yeah let's do um if I do Control Alt and Y or con Command Option Y, we can add this uh, adjustment layer, and let's do a glow effect. 
So I sometimes I use, use just fast blur and I blur the layers over each other, but glow is obviously a nice inbuilt version. So we can make this glow much wider. It's going to be it's basically a bloom. So, okay. I just want it to be quite, I want it to catch the warmer colors. So 60 odd percent. There we go. And then I think we can knock it back somewhat. So in the moment it's a bit large. Let's see what it looks like back here. Obviously it's not only on the end shot there. Okay, that's very subtle. I'm not sure if that's going to come across perfectly in the stream, but if I if I increase the strength, you'll see where we're looking there. <laughs> Obviously way too much there. So I'd leave it at the kind of lower end, just to make it nice and subtle. When you add these effects, it's often you tend to go a bit too far with them and then you need to knock it back 50%. That's generally a good rule of thumb if, you, uh, if you're wondering there. Okay. Now, if I duplicate this this uh, beauty comp and I added it back over, we could, e we could also get kind of like a, a, a boost, if you like. So if I grab the fast box blur again, and throw it on this layer and we could do that you, you can see we can get a glowing effect if we add it back over but it's a bit less it's a bit more universal it kind of washes it can wash the the screen out but i often use this as a as a go-to however i don't want it to do that I, I i do want it to have the glimmering effect that the 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 glimmering layer itself has so i, I do want some sort of twinkling in the in the light of these gold pieces and even even earlier on as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some custom uh, layers based exactly the same as we did in the glimmering one so if we look at these it's the fast box blurs with the vertical streaks but we're going to do it on the whole comp the whole beauty comp the whole uh, proxied beauty comp and then we're going to add those back in over the top very subtly so i'm going to hit command or control d to duplicate our layer and we're going to call this one Vertical Streaks. And the, the difference here is that we're going to need to somehow extract only the brightest parts of the image. So I'm going to solo that layer. And I'm actually going to add Lumetri, which has a whole toolbox of, of ways of correcting the uh, image, the color and stuff. So first things first, I'm going to drop the saturation down to zero. And secondly, I'm going to go down to the curves and I'm going to clip it quite significantly so that only the very brightest particles are still showing. I'm just going to scrub around, just see where, where we are with that. So maybe even more than that. Just want it very subtly done. There we go. Now, if we change this back to an add mode and we unsolo it, we, we can see that it's it's not really affecting the overall image apart from adding a bit more heat to these hot areas there. It's quite subtle if I A and B it. Mostly visible on this streak at the moment. So if I drop that out, there we go. But like I said, we're going to actually blur that. So let's grab our fast blur. And then we could uh, we could bloom that out. In fact, yeah, we could bloom that out as its own thing, and then we could do the streaks. Let's let's see what this looks like first. That is quite subtle. So let's do the streaks first. So let's just do uh, vertical. And if we zoom in, we should be able to see this. If I turn our glow off as well, there we go. So can you see those vertical streaks just just catching off the uh, off those clipped? parts and I'm just going to duplicate that same layer horizontal streaks I should probably say horizontal streaks beauty or something just to differentiate them from the ones in the glimmering one but I don't think anyone's too worried there we go and you get the the crisscross the glimmer I might make the horizontal ones slightly wider there we go and maybe I'll drop their opacity down a touch there we go so let's zoom out. Let's go back to here. Let's just check a few moments where I can A, a and B it. So I can see it really nice and clearly on this one here. Look. In fact, I might 
if I made those too subtle. There we go, that's not too bad. Ah, it's just there's more context around that to see that we don't get the uh, the vertical one as quite as visible. But if we zoom into this one, perhaps, yep, getting this nice glinting, nice glow. Oops, hit my tablet a bit too quick there. And if I hit play, we'll see this all coming together. Oh, I should put the glow back on as well. Oh, let's have it without the glow for a minute, and then we'll add the glow on as the final thing. And I think we're just about ready to to wrap it up. It's really nice how these particles all start to gradually accelerate towards our logo. So they're kind of static at the beginning and you're kind of moving the camera through them, swirling away and forming our, our logo. Flowfield doing all the magic, of course. And mapping. Don't forget mapping. Mapping is one of my favorite things as well. <laughs> That star has come out really nice as well. You've got the nice mix of warm and, and cooler tones. And you can see there the glint is really nice and clear on that one. And you could animate that up and down. You could add a bit of wiggle to the noise of the, uh, of the opacity, perhaps. Oh, it might be quite strong at the end there, actually. So I might want to animate those down a touch. Actually, no. Do you know what? I quite like that. All right. So I, we'll render this out. And we'll play it in full after this after this video section is complete. But for now, we're going to call that done on our logo forming series. And I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.